Mike, alcoholic. All right. You know, I've always, I've often pondered that page where it talks about when we were approached by someone and who the problem had been solved. My, my, my first thought was, what if I'm approached by someone in who the problem has not been solved? They're going to tell me something like, just come to a meeting and it'll rub off by osmosis. And I think it's important to tell the newcomer, which there's a lot of them in here, uh, that uh, you should find someone who's always talking about the books and always talking about the steps because the number of people in whom the problem has not been solved vastly outnumber the people in who it has. Just come back a year later and see how many faces you see and you'll know what I'm talking about. So if you're new, it's up to you where you want to go and you're probably going to have to find you somebody that's going to put you in some work, uh, make you, you know, follow the steps that they work so they can, you can get the results that they got. The path of least resistance here is to find somebody in who the problem has not been solved and they'll just say, hey, let's just go to uh, Shoney's after the meeting and just go to 90 and 90 and, and you know, and that's, the newcomer feels like that's the solution. That's not the solution. That's just the beginning. So if you're new and you want to stay, you're going to have to be on page 25 where she read off of, find somebody in who the problem has been solved. You might have to approach them, interestingly enough. And, and then you're going to have to pick this kid up. You know, I've thought about that page a lot. I thought about the fourth dimension. It sounds like a place, doesn't it? Uh, and you hear in meetings, and I've heard it for going on three decades now, that recovery is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a journey, it's not a destination. But interestingly enough, the fourth dimension sounds just like a destination to me. And something else on that page, it talks about self-searching, leveling my pride, confession of my shortcomings, which this process requires for a successful consummation. I too am a fan of the dictionary. The only consummation I had ever heard of is when a man and woman get married and they go off uh, uh, in the hotel room and do something that night and they consummate the marriage. Certainly he's not talking about that. I mean, I was 22 when I got here. I thought I got a little chuckle out of it. So I went and looked up the word and the word consummation means to bring something to a conclusion or state of perfection. Go look it up yourself. So I know that Bill knew that when he wrote it because he was a tremendous wordsmith. Bring something to a conclusion or state of perfection. And then there he is talking about the fourth dimension again. So he's implying that there's a place that I'm trying to get to. And it's a lot less, a lot more simple to understand uh, once I've studied the book a little bit to find out how to articulate what that place is uh, than you might think. Because when it talks about, to me, on page 85, this destination that I'm looking for, it talks about... By this time, sanity will have returned. I'm in a position of neutrality concerning drink. I haven't sworn off. It's just been removed. I'm safe and protected. In that whole list of things there that it talks about, that is the fourth dimension. That is what, what I'm looking to get here. Not just off the saw, sitting on my hand, white knuckling it. A safe, a safety, a neutrality where alcohol is not even a problem. I can go in the convenience store. Who cares if they have a beer counter? It doesn't even enter my mind. That's the fourth dimension that we're talking about. So when I think about, and I try to make sense of what I always heard that recovery is, is a journey, not a destination, how do I make sense of it? And was it, what is it that I'm maintaining and what is it that I'm growing? Because a lot of people get in a twist about, oh, it's not the maintenance steps, it's the growth steps. And you'll have an entire meeting on whether it's the growth steps or the maintenance steps. I've been in a hundred of those. So the thing about it is, is that what are we trying to maintain and what am I trying to grow? Clearly, I'm trying to maintain this sobriety. Clearly, I'm trying to maintain this place of neutrality that I'm at in this fourth dimension that it describes. But what am I trying to grow in? Obviously, on 84, it talks about I'm trying to grow in understanding and effectiveness. Within, within the confines of that place that the steps has taken me, how can I live life more efficiently? Like it talks about on 86, right? I become more efficient, not burning energy up foolishly. See, so what I have found is that I grow within understanding and effectiveness and become more efficient while I'm staying at that position of neutrality. Newcomers need to hear this. They need to hear it said in a way that they can understand. I was a newcomer. 
I've had a lot of practice at saying things. I've studied the book. I know what it says and where it says it. And I've come to some enlightening conclusions by doing that study. And then I found out that Bill's hand was led by God to write that document. Because there's so many secrets in there mentioned on one page and then answered on another. You know, I've heard in meetings a hundred times or a thousand times, don't quit five minutes before the miracle. As a matter of fact, I just heard it a minute ago. Nobody ever says what the miracle is. But interestingly enough, on 85, it defines the miracle as well. It says that is the miracle of it, this new attitude toward liquor. So I don't have to worry about quitting five minutes before the miracle because the miracle has already happened. But the trick of what it's talking about on 25 is the key and the trick is keeping the miracle. But the most important aspect of this whole thing is telling the newcomer that you have in fact experienced the miracle. Because, you know, we, we get into this thing in AA about being so afraid of what people think. We don't, want them to t we don't want to tell them we've reached the fourth dimension. We don't want to tell them we've reached that position of neutrality because we don't want them to think we're arrogant. But the fact of the matter is, when I read how it works, it says, if you want what we have, you are willing to take certain steps. That means I need to tell you what I have. And it needs to sound good. It needs to sound positive, And most of all, it needs to sound possible. See, and these steps are very possible, whether you're new or old, whether you're from State Penn or Penn State, whether you're from Yale or Jail, this disease is an equal opportunity destroyer, but anybody can also get the program. This is the only, op this is the only outfit where you can be too smart for this thing, because you can't be too stupid. I'm one of them lawyers. I'm not retired yet, but I'm just telling you, I've seen people be too smart for this thing. My high-powered intellect, I want to take the big book and dissect it and find out how it's bullshit. Here's my experience. I've chosen to use the intellect that God gave me to embrace the steps and embrace the solution and understand it more so I can share with newcomers the gift and the miracle that's happened to me. So in, in total and in, in, in summary, what I can tell you is that I have reached the consummation of this program a conclusion or state of perfection. The miracle has happened because I have a new attitude toward liquor. I'm growing an understanding and effectiveness as each day goes on because I'm still coming to one meeting a day after all these years. And there's a reason to that because I know this has to be the center of my wagon wheel. If I try to relegate recovery to just a spoke, I'm headed out the door. And as long as recovery is the center of my wagon wheel, I can never fail. With God at my side, I'm never alone. I've had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, and I'll pass.